Day 295 of the Trump administration, and tonight it is now clear that the attention of Robert Mueller is, for the time being at least, bearing down on Mike Flynn, the retired U.S. Army general who was one of the stalwarts of the Trump campaign effort and who served as national security advisor for 24 days in the West Wing. NBC News reports today Mueller is investigating a possible deal between senior Turkish officials and Flynn during the presidential transition. This report says in part, quote, Four people familiar with the investigation say Mueller is looking into whether Flynn discussed orchestrating the return to Turkey of a chief rival of Turkish President Erdogan who lives in the U.S. Flynn was offered upwards of $15 million to be paid directly or indirectly if he could complete the deal according to two sources familiar with the meeting. Flynn's lawyers released a statement about the story saying, quote, we have intentionally avoided responding to every rumor or allegation raised in the media, but today's news cycle has brought allegations about General Flynn ranging from kidnapping to bribery that are so outrageous and prejudicial that we are making an exception to our usual rule. They are false. Flynn, you'll recall, among Trump's earliest campaign supporters. He served on the transition team before following the new president to the White House. Former acting Attorney General Sally Yates over at Justice had testified that six days after Trump took the oath of office, she warned the White House Flynn was compromised with the Russians. She also testifies that testified that Vice President Mike Pence had unknowingly made false statements about Flynn's conversations with the Russians. An administration official has said said Pence was relaying what Flynn told him. 18 days after Yates' warning, Trump fired Flynn. Here's how he explained why he did it. Mike Flynn is a funny person, and I asked for his resignation. He respectfully gave it. He is a man who uh, there was a certain amount of information given to Vice President Pence, who's with us today. And I was not happy with the way that information was given. Did you direct Mike Flynn to discuss sanctions with the Russian ambassador no, I didn't. prior to your no, I didn't. inauguration? No, I didn't. And would Mike, you have fired him if the information me. hadn't leaked out? No, I fired him because of what he said to Mike Pence. Very simple. Mike was doing his job. He was calling countries and his counterparts. We ultimately fired, but we fired for a different reason. You're talking about General Flynn. General Flynn, yes. Because, because of lying to the vice president. Yeah, but it, everything plays in. Everything plays into it. But we fired him because he said something to the vice president that was not so. Let's bring in our starting panel on a Friday night, shall we? NBC News national political reporter Julia Ainsley, who is one of the authors of that Flynn report we quoted. More on that in just a moment. Political White House reporter Matthew Nussbaum is back with us. And here with us in New York, Jennifer Rogers, former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. Good evening and welcome to you all. Julia, you get to go first because of the panelists you made the news today. Uh, tell us this story as best you can for a lay audience, including... Uh, how in the name of God it, it also includes the Poconos in Pennsylvania? That is a good question, and I will break that down for you as simply as I can. Basically, we know that Robert Mueller is looking into whether or not Michael Flynn and his associates met in a December 2016 meeting at the 21 Club in New York. That is an upscale restaurant just blocks away from the Trump Tower where Flynn was serving on the presidential transition team. We understand from sources who are familiar with this meeting that they allegedly talked about a $15 million bribe that they would try to give Flynn once he was national security advisor if he could see that Fatula Gulen was removed from the United States. Gulen, of course, is a political opponent of Turkish President Erdogan. He's an elderly cleric living in the Poconos. In order to remove him, that could have been through a kidnapping operation or through extradition. We also know that the FBI had re-upped their investigation. They were asked to re-up their investigation into Gulen at the beginning of the Trump administration when Flynn served as national security advisor. This was after they had already dismissed this investigation under Obama. So we're looking 
looking at a number of pieces, but what Mueller is really trying to drill down on here is whether or not Michael Flynn, Trump's first national security advisor, was exploited to use his position in the U.S. government in order to serve the interests of another country, that country being Turkey. And Julia, isn't it true that we also know about this meeting and the Turkish angle because a certain former CIA director uh, came in and thought it didn't look or sound right to him, and he has since told that story. So, Brian, that's actually two separate stories. The former CIA director, Woolsey, is referring to a September meeting. That was before the election when these Turkish officials talked to Michael Flynn about using his position just within his own lobbying firm, the Flynn Intel Group, and trying to orchestrate a forcible removal, possibly a kidnapping of Gulen. This meeting that we know about now actually happened during the transition when Flynn knew he would be becoming national security advisor later, and it may have involved a more legal route such as an extradition. Of course, it is not normal, not appropriate routes for an extradition request to come from the White House. It's supposed to come through diplomatic channels in the Justice Department. So, Counselor, this comes down to you. Someone said on social media today that if, if there could be anything funny taken out of this, this could be the plot from a Coen Brothers movie with General Flynn driving around the Poconos looking for this old guy to send out of the country. Um, as a former prosecutor, what alarm bells go off in your head? Well, it's not good for Flynn, no matter how you slice it. If he's talking about taking money to try to orchestrate a return of Gulen to Turkey through official channels, mm -hmm. then you're talking about serious bribery offenses. You're not allowed to take money to do things for your government job, right, except your salary. If you're talking about him trying to orchestrate some illegal operation, it's obviously a federal crime to orchestrate a kidnapping that crosses international lines. So either way you look at it, he's talking about uh, committing a very serious crime if these allegations are proven to be true. Matthew, how does this continue to haunt um, the administration that, uh, after all, continues, even though the traveling White House right now is on the other side of the world? In some ways, it's convenient that they're over there in Asia for now while this news drops, but Sarah Sanders and the rest will certainly have to confront this when they get back. Uh, and I think it would be hard to overstate just how serious this is. Obviously, the Manafort indictment was very serious for this White House, but that was someone who left the campaign in August. Uh, Mike Flynn is someone who was with the campaign through the end, was prominent on the transition, and served in this White House uh, over the warnings of people like President Obama, who told uh, President Trump not to not to hire him. And you have to remember, it was Michael Flynn who Donald Trump was defending to James Comey and said, hey, can't we find a way to let this go? He went on to later fire James Comey, which led to, led to Bob Mueller getting here in the first place. This Flynn case is very, very serious for the White House, even more serious than the Manafort case. And Matthew, let's go a little deeper on that, because this is more than just a news media distinction. Um, Flynn does put it closer to the Oval Office of a sitting president than anyone else. People may have seen uh, splashy headlines about Paul Manafort and others, but this would put it in a different category. That's right. At the end of the day, as important as Paul Manafort was in this campaign, he was the campaign chairman. He was helping to lead a political campaign. What we're seeing with Flynn, with these allegations, is possibly using his government office, his position as the national security advisor, uh, to be basically doing deeds on behalf of a, a foreign government. Uh, it's a question of who in the White House knew about this. We know that Flynn allegedly misled the vice president. But having this so close to the Oval Office, and then again, having the president himself ask the FBI director to back away from this investigation, that raises so many red flags, and obviously Bob Mueller is digging into that. Uh, Julia, uh, assisting the prosecution as often is the case, there is a grand jury sitting in Washington, D.C. You've learned further about their schedule of late. What can you report about that? Yes, that's right, Brian. So we know that the grand jury that's been impaneled by Robert Mueller will be interviewing witnesses about Flynn's lobbying activities through the end of next week. That's important because a lot of people have been waiting for a Flynn indictment for some time. Since the Manafort indictment, we've thought that Flynn would be the next shoe to drop. We know that Mueller is continuing these interviews, which shows us two things. One is that he really wants to drill deep and get as much information on Flynn as he possibly can. And it also shows that Flynn perhaps could be cooperative. 
operating, and that's why this timeline has been extended. Uh, Councillor, I want to hear you out on a piece in Time magazine written by the former assistant director of counterintelligence for Mueller while at the FBI, Robert Anderson. It, the headline is How Robert Mueller Works a Case, and here's a quote from it in part. When you talk about people who are used to spending nearly $1 million in three years on business suits out of a place in Cyprus, these guys are not going to do 25 years in jail. That's why Bob Mueller's going about this the way that he is. He knows these guys are not seasoned criminals, and he knows they're going to roll over on each other. Mark my words, it'll start becoming a race to the special counsel's office. I also heard someone today refer to Mueller as an acupuncturist for the precision with which they've gone about the case so far. Your reaction? Well, that's the idea, clearly. I mean, that was, I think, the point behind the, the substance and the heft of the Manafort and Gates indictment was to get them to cooperate. And similarly here, they have charges that they could bring on Flynn already, but the registration, the Foreign uh, Agents Registration Act offense and a false statements offense is not maybe enough to get him to flip. So you bring, potentially, if they can, these charges, which are significantly more serious. And Flynn already, unlike Manafort, has indicated an interest in getting immunity and perhaps cooperating. So I think they think if if they can get a serious enough offense against Flynn, then he's definitely flipping. Um, do you concur with the, uh, what seems to be the present attitude that we know between 1 and 10 percent of what's going on for all our, our fancy reporting and all the talking we devote to this? Mueller runs a very tight ship. I think that's right. I mean, and that's the way it should be, honestly. I mean, these are confidential investigations that are going on, and until they bring actions that are meant to be public, then I agree that they should stay confidential, uh, despite the great work of the news media. But I, I think we, we have a lot to learn still, and hopefully they will be able to do their work, and, and we'll find it out when it's time. And Matt, let's just delve briefly into the Trump agenda. While all this is going on, uh, we're hearing a lot about uh, tax cuts and tax reform, and soon the traveling circus is going to come back to town, and we're going to be all about Capitol Hill once again. That's right. I mean, we know this administration has a hard time driving uh, one message. We've seen that this week when tax reform and the Asia trip were supposed to be the big thing. Obviously, uh, Roy Moore made short work of that. Between this controversy down in Alabama and the White House having to answer for that, and Mueller's investigation uh, expanding and, and these new questions about Flynn, uh, you couple that with the fact that this tax bill looks like it actually raises taxes on a fair amount of middle class families. That's a lot of issues for the White House to be coming back to. And this is not an environment that's friendly to something as complex and politically difficult as tax reform. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.